well, then don't do it. So at, at some point, um, there's two parts of this. I'm, I've started to record this for uh, whoever, care, whoever cares. Whoever cares. <laughs> People ask me why I record my stuff, and the answer is I have some friends that are insomniacs. <laughs> and so, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those of you who haven't gotten that will by the time we're done. All right. They just they say, can I just have can I just have one of your videos, and I'll go right to sleep. All right. So there's um. The, the, I like to call this more closings with e edge because the reason for having technology is to help you close transactions. I have met real estate agents that were really good at technology and made no money. And I've met agents that made a lot of money that were not good at technology, right? So the technology itself does not replace good real estate agents. However, it can make your life easier. And the purpose is to close more real estate transactions. Now, there's two parts to this. What I'm going to do today is what I think everybody ought to do which is to have a database and to have campaigns and reminders. And I'm going to show you how to set that up. There's a whole nother world called internet lead generation. And if you have a one, three, five, how many people know what a one, three, five is? That's great. Um, a one, three, five, which is a planning technique for uh, basically coming up with a blueprint. It just happens to have three priorities. What did Darren Hardy say how many priorities did he say you should have three right so you have a one goal three priorities and five strategies for each of those priorities if one of your strategies for how i'm going to get business is internet lead generation then you should focus on that and there's much more you could do if you're um it says i have a slow connection uh are you on um yeah you can I can hear somebody. All right. Audio connection restored. Oh, can you guys online hear me? I'll do it some sideways. Is that all right? Yes? Is there anybody online? I don't know. All right. So we are. So here we go. That'll scare them. All right. Cool. So if, if Internet lead generation is one of your things, then uh, there's more to do, but this is a basic thing. First of all, let's just talk about what we're looking at. Across the top, you see the black bar, the black navigation with all these drop downs. I tell people this is research, essentially, right? This is where you can find educational materials, research. You can find stuff there. We're not going to be dealing with it. People will oftentimes call me up and say, I can't long, I can't find my stuff. Where are you? I'm in the technology section. This is technology research. Now, going forward, I'll be happy to do a class on how do you get money, how to close transactions using the mobile app. Does that sound like, right? How to close transactions using, how to generate leads with your mobile app. It's not what you're thinking. Websites, Keller Williams listing system. Most of what we're going to do is the eEdge control panel. And I generally start, it doesn't really matter where we click, but let's just start with leads. Notice I have four new leads. Really? I hope. All right. And so when we, basically whatever we click on there is going to take us to the back end of the system. And I have a, I don't know if you've, these look like hot leads. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, they're, they're going to be moving quickly. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm sure I can. Um, now, the idea, what I, I had done is I had put Eileen and Tony into the system manually. The default setting when you import, which we're going to cover how to do, or add a contact is a lead. If you have somebody characterized as a lead, when it, they will come up in your dashboard. So the Keller Williams E-Edge definition of a lead is somebody that you need to contact, right? So if John says, I know a guy that's interested in selling his house, 
Um, here's his name and phone number and his email. He's down in my neck of the woods, and I go and I put him into eEdge, and I select lead. It means it's going to remind me every time I log in that I need to contact this person. Now that I've contacted the person, let's say I just look at this and I say, oh, Eileen, yeah, I forgot. I've already talked to her. I click on the drop down and I get to pick one of these various statuses. One status is retry. And retry means I tried, I called, left a message, didn't call me back, didn't answer. And if I put a retry, it gives me, a, it still keeps popping up every time I log in, but I know I've already contacted the person, made an attempt. If I've talked to the person, I could characterize them as hot, warm, cold. Pending means I've actually in a transaction. Sold means sold and trash. I always like hot trash, but that's a different, something entirely different. Trash, the reason we mark somebody trash is because we leave them in the system. If I mark, so sometimes I import from lists that I might import again from. And the system will not import the same person twice. But if I, if Eileen says, don't ever call me again, you know, I never want to hear from you. Uh, I'm calling a lawyer if I ever hear from you, and I delete her from my database, and then later I'm importing a list that I've got, and she's on that list, she goes back in, which means all of a sudden she's starting to get my emails again. If I select trash, it means she won't receive any bulk group emails I send, period. I could still send her an email, but I would have to, I'd have to select her name, and as, as a, I, the fact that she's in a group or I send it to everybody, she will not get it if she's trash. Does everybody understand that if we delete, they might end up being back in and mad at us. Trash means they're still there, and sometimes, have you ever had somebody say, don't ever call me, I'm tired, and then later you see them, they said, oh, it's okay, go ahead, start sending me that stuff again. All right, now I just go and I change the status. So when I do this, notice she's gone. Tony, I would say, is warm. And then these are other people that I've... Now, notice this one says looking in Gilroy and looking in Salinas. Do uh, you know what that means? It means they've actually come through my website. So I'm going to click on Nick. And this. so what this is telling me is that Nick registered on my website. Don't, I know you guys are all copying his email. I won't help you. Um, <laughs> I know really. <laughs> and he's listing alerts zero, save zero. It means he viewed a property, right, basically. And he's got reminders here. I'm going to view them. Uh, these contacts received the last step of the custom. All right, so what this, what I've done, this Nick had come to a website, I had run, I'll show you how to do this. I'd run an ad in Facebook using my Keller Williams website as the landing page. And Nick had gone and looked at a house. He was clicking on properties. At a certain point, he's told to register or go. He registered so he could keep looking. He went into the system. I launched a 8x8 custom campaign, which is now expired. And now it says I should add to a 33 touch, it's a reminder. So the last step in my 8x8 campaign is to add somebody to a 33 touch. And what I could do is right down here where it says campaigns, it says add contact to a campaign, and I could add him to 33 touch, ready for what's next, HTML version. I click on that. And he's been added to it, and I close, and now he's on another campaign. Now, that may have lost some of you. We're going to go through how to do it. But the idea is, is that if, I log, if I'm using this software and I log into my dashboard every day, it'll have reminders. It'll have new leads. It'll have people that I need to follow up with, and they'll be right in front of me, and I can do something. Right? And I just showed you how somebody had reached one campaign, and now they're in another. Wasn't that fascinating? So I'm going to go back. Yeah, I can say you're just, oh, wow, that was just, just, let me go back. Awesome. All right. Now, oh, well. And 
it doesn't always like the login from the admin page. All right. Thank you for logging me out. Oh, there we go. So we're back in. And so Nick, I'm going to say he's kind of cold because he's kind of cold, right? And because um, he isn't doing much other than this. I click on John, uh, J-O-G-N, and I go down. And again, he has set up a listing alert. Um, I'm going to change. I could change his status here to cold. Now, the reason for changing status, let me just go back to the dashboard. The reason for changing status, what I recommend that you have in your mind is, first of all, you need to have a database. This is an okay one, but who in your database is most likely to buy or sell a house? If somebody said who, you should have a name. If the answer is there's no one in my database that's interested in buying or selling a house, then we need to work on that, right? But would you want those people more in your mind than somebody who says, well, maybe sometime if I win the lottery, call me, you know, uh, I'll buy something, right? Then th that person, do we, we don't necessarily want to get rid of them, but they're not a, a candidate, right? We're going to go through that. So this is what the dashboard looks like. Unread messages, email, upcoming reminders. Um, some of these I use for other things. And so the idea here is, is that what makes a database a customer relationship management system? And the answer usually is two things. One is reminders. What makes this different from an Excel spreadsheet is I can create reminders that remind me what I'm supposed to do with somebody. And another one is comments. I know I could do that in Excel but my ability to keep records of conversation so that when I call the person, I'm reading it, I said, so how was your trip to Tuscany? Did you have fun? At, you know, and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, contact, so th that's all. Up here is the, if you want to send an email to somebody, see this little button up here? They, they rearrange their um, interface, I think, just to annoy um, Keller Williams agents. And so they, it used to have a big button that said email. And then people said, oh, my God, they took it out. It's gone. I can't email anybody. How do I email anybody? Where do I find the email? That, see that up in the top right-hand corner? If you click on that, that's an email button. What happened to the reminders? I don't see the reminders. They're down here. Um, that little clock is reminders. I have 30, God help me, 30 reminders. All right. So that's what I'm going to say about the dashboard. Let's go to contacts. And what I believe that you're, the, if, if you're in my <clears throat> coaching program or not, the first thing you ought to do is get your database together. And what that means is anybody from your email database, Yahoo, Gmail, Hotmail, AOL, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I had an AOL account. So wherever you are, you can export the people out of that database. First thing, and by the way, just so you know, Keller, the eEdge will not import the same email twice. So rather than spending a couple of hours getting rid of, and by the way, in Excel, there's an easy way to do that, but rather than even tripping about that, you just upload the whole thing, and it will not import any email twice. So it sort of scrubs itself. So well, I'm going to start at the bottom here. How about this? I'll start second to the bottom. Manage groups. All right, manage groups. Now, this mine looks weird because of, of a whole bunch of stuff. I, I, I know mine looks weird. But um, let's. I have three eEdge accounts. <laughs> because uh, I'm special. And what I would do, yeah, that kind of special. So what's, what is this that I'm looking at? Uh, don't save that. So let's talk about groups. Now, one of the ways to make the system work much better for you is for you to have groups. And a group would be defined... 
it would either be affected by how you contact them, how often you contact them, <laughs> or the message. How, so what, what would we mean by how? And there's one more. Snail mail. Snail mail. Oh, snail mail. Right. So is it good to still send somebody a Christmas card, a postcard, a something? I don't, how many emails do you guys get? A lot. Too many. Too many. Emails are not good for developing relationships. They're good for communicating information. Right. And so real estate agents use emails because it's cheap and easy, not because it's effective. So I'm going to show you that one of the things that eEdge will do is they'll send out postcards for you. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Two sided jumbo postcards, color, first class, addressed, costs about 83, 84 cents a postcard, including shipping, handling, tax notary, document preparation, recording, the whole <laughs> the whole thing, right? That's what it comes out to be. And that includes first class postage. Like a single, single postage? That you have to have 20, 25 minimum. Okay. Right? Michael Lewis Marketing will send out first class postage if you have 500 minimum. Yeah. Mm. 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 Ouch. Right, but let's say you have 25 or so. Should you have 25 people in your database that you could send a holiday greeting to? Right. Now, what we're going to talk about is um, ways of grouping them because grouping people is one of the most important things. So, how if we don't have their mailing address, we can't mail them stuff. If we don't have their email, we can't email them. If we don't know their phone number, we can't call them. Hope this is living up to your expectations, isn't that? Isn't that? Isn't it? Yeah, that, that was it. Yeah, I'm glad. You, hey, Tony, I'm glad you brought him all the way up to tell us that. That's great. But you understand? So, should our a group? I actually have created a group that says contacts I have addresses for. Right? It was, I just I know what the group meant, right? And so those people I might send something. Uh, I might send something printed. My strategy for working a sphere of influence. You want to hear the five strategies I suggest for working a sphere of influence? One, mail them something once a month. For real, I mean mail it once a month. Two, email them twice a month. Three, call them once a month. Four, Brian Buffini would say, pop by, mm -hmm. right? How many people are you having coffee with each month? How many people do you have lunch with each month? We're talking about, and number five could be interacting with them on social media. So, you know, that means you like, share, and comment on the sushi lunch they're having. Is that what? Giant yeah. See, nobody care. We don't. Nobody cares about what you're eating, but they care about what they're eating. Isn't that right? For some, <laughs> some, some unknown reason, right? And there's a way of doing this in five or ten minutes. Social media. You don't. You shouldn't be spending a lot of time. So, how you contact them? Did, did everybody get that? Does that sound like a reasonable yeah. plan? Yes. Right. Yeah. Can I ask a question. Sure. So the only thing is, is the people I send mail a mailing to aren't necessarily the people who see me on social media, who aren't the people that I call. Right. You know, it's like, so does it have to be all these things consistently? No, it doesn't have to be all those things consistently. There are people, I'm old enough that um, I, re I remember the first time I handed somebody a business card and they looked at my card and they handed it back to me and they said, put your website on it. Right, and I had a website, but it wasn't on the card. Because I had a bunch of cards left over, and I wanted to give up the cards I had before I 
I, you know, I, you know, I know most of you can't remember when real estate agents didn't have websites. I also have gone through where I asked somebody for their contact information and they said, I'm on Facebook. I hired a real estate agent entirely through Facebook messaging. Right? We, I did not know her phone number. I did not have her email address. All of the communication before she showed up for the appointment was done on Facebook messaging. That's just the way it is. Right? Do you understand? That's so okay that's you okay. That you have to do it. All over. I know that. You have to do that. I'm I'm speaking, by the way, you could spend a lot of time on grouping people. So how often you do you have some people that calling them once a month may not be appropriate? They don't want to hear from you once a month. Right? Generally I would say once a quarter, once every three months as a minimum. And if they say, I don't even want that, then that's it. You understand? They're in a different campaign. Are there buyers that you had to be calling every week? Right? Do you understand? So how often you contact somebody? Because when we create a group, we're going to create campaigns. And the easiest way to launch a campaign is by a group. And then there's the message. Would you be sending the same information to potential buyers and sellers? If they're buyers, do you want to send out the message, boy, prices have hit the highest price part ever. You better get rid of it before it tanks. If this was stock, you'd be selling it. Hurry, right? Are you going to, right? Right? Are you going to be sending that message to buyers? buyers you know, what What are they saying? Don't buy. Wait, right? Right? Do you understand? So that's the message. By the way, if you're a member of a, Church, is it possible that the language and words you would use in communicating with that sphere of influence could be different from people that are not part of your church group, right? It could be, right? Some people say, no, but it might be. Would it be more effective the more personal we could get? Yes. Right. But we also need to do this somewhat in bulk. Isn't that right? Right. Do we respond to that when Amazon sends you something that says, hey, we see you were looking at, you know, you know, at this. John and I get them probably for cables and other yeah. boring, really boring stuff. I get a lot of stuff. Hey, do you want to check out this new Internet? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. That in coaching books. But but does is that you understand the more the message? That's how we would group people. Let's just talk about what would be some groups. So what would be a group that we would want to create? Sellers. 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 Buyers. Email contacts. Email. By, by the way, can people be in more than one group? Yes. 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 Absolutely. Right. Email contacts. Email sellers, email buyers. Right. Sellers. By the way, one of the things that it will do is that if we have sellers and buyers and we want to send an email to everybody that's a seller and they don't have an email, it doesn't do anything. Right, do you understand? It knows that they don't have an email. It doesn't do anything. It just doesn't send it. Um, how? What else would we? Sold. What? Past client. All right. Any others? Personal friend. Sphere of influence. Yeah, well, as opposed to business contacts. All right. How about real friends? Yeah. <laughs> as opposed to Facebook friends. I know, Real friends. friends. Family. Family. Um, yeah, we, but your list, to understand, may vary. So let's talk about sphere of influence. Now, one way of characterizing people, I don't know what's the best way to do this, would be some of you may recognize an A++. Who's, a++? Plus? Yeah. Referrals. That's a, well, that's a, those, those are the ones, ones that give referrals. Them, give them referrals. Right. Referrals. Sometimes uh, the A++ is a Brian Buffini. Um, in Keller Williams, are we would call them an advanced advocate. So an advanced advocate would be somebody that if they heard two people talking about real estate, would say, hey, hey, I, I, sorry to interrupt you. I heard you talking about real estate. I have this buddy. His name is Tony. He's really great. He's good. If you're thinking you, you ought to you ought to call him, let me give you one of his cards. Right? Does anybody have anybody like that? Right? Now, would we want to treat them differently than perhaps others? 
right? So they may not be getting a uh, E-Edge made up holiday greeting, but you might actually go buy something nice to send to them. So then another group would be, so those are advanced, just advocates. And we'll call them A's. And A. It just occurred to me that advocate began with A too. It's been a long, it's a long day, right? So, so an advocate would be somebody, if somebody said, hey, do you know anybody that's uh, a real estate agent, I want to buy or sell a house, they would mention your name, hopefully sooner than later. Is everybody with me? Mm -hmm. By the way, um, they've surveyed people, stopping them on the street, and said, um, hey, can you, uh, we're doing a quick survey, um, can you name a real estate agent? And they would, a name would come out. And then they'd say, how about another? And, uh, and then how about another? And So like potato chips, name a potato chip. Lays. Lays, how about another? Doritos. Doritos. See, now, now, let's stick with Lou. So you said Lay's, what's another? Ruffles. Right. But you see, now, we all could name different ones, but, but individually we start to run out. Yeah. Now, what they found, do you understand how many names do we keep in our head about how many kinds of shoes, how many kinds of soft drinks, how many kinds of real estate agents do we keep in our head? Not very many. Now, what they, so what they found is that most people would come up with two, sometimes three, but when they put them aside and gave them some time to think, they came up with eight or nine, All right? So, I mean, what you understand, how, so really, how many people do you know? Well, actually, now that I think about it, there's a guy where his wife is really, and, you know, they came. So what we want to do is we want to be in the top of their mind, right? Isn't that right? So Because if they don't say our name, one, two, or three, they're not saying it. You, you get the idea. So an advocate would be somebody that would, if asked, do you know a good real estate agent, would say your name. So a B, uh, a B would be um, simply somebody that you know, you get along with them, uh, you have an okay relationship. You wouldn't count on them necessarily to volunteer your information, even if they were asked. And a C is somebody that you've got their email address. You don't know who they are. All right. If there was a police lineup, you could not identify them. Right. But you've got it and you don't know what to do. Now, what our goal in all this, and I'm going to put this a little line here, is to move the C's to the B's, the B's to the A's, and the A's to the A pluses. That's it in a nutshell, right? That's the goal, right? And uh, others, we're talking about the Mets right now. Habit Mets, we're not talking about really yet. We're talking about people that you've met. Is that... So we could use these as groups too, because our A++ is one of the guys that I was coaching in another market center um, gets almost all of his business from attorneys, and he's doing okay, you know, and he's like, yeah, there's this attorney, referred me a client, a listing six months ago, sold the house, haven't talked to her since. Is that, is that a... If somebody referred a seller to you that you listed and closed, would you be talking to that person? Yes. But do you understand after six months he realized he hadn't called her, and now he felt guilty about never having called her, and he's now he's talking, I, I'm like the therapist, so what do I, <laughs> you know, so what do I say? How do I call her? Um, the, the guys, the guys are understanding this. Um, so I haven't called her in six months. What do I say? You know, how about I, I ran across your name and I, and I realized I hadn't called you in a long time and I'm really sorry and I'm calling to apologize. How the heck are you doing? Right now, would it be, have been better if he had launched a campaign so that in his system he was reminded on a regular basis that he ought to call this person and say, want to have coffee, want to have lunch, that he pops by and brings her something right you know would this be a better idea 
If you only have five or six people in your database, this doesn't become a problem. When you have 200, 300 people in your database, you need software to help you keep in control. Yes? How are, I, I, I understand these categories, but I don't know where in the system. Groups. Just under groups. Groups. So I'll do um, an A++. Oops. Okay. An A++, and I'm going to click on Save. Now, unable to proceed it can only contain letters, numbers, or space characters. I did that on purpose so that you can um, see how, how the system works. Uh, I do that often in my technology classes. I deliberately make errors just, <laughs> just for demonstration purposes. I, yeah. it, it's, a, it's a teaching it's a teaching technique. So now that we've got that, we could say um, A, we could just say A, you, you get the idea. We can create them. Now these are a bunch of ones that I've got, um, that I've, I've, I've got, I've got crazy stuff. All right. Does everybody understand that? One of the reasons for creating the groups up first is because when we go to import and export, now, by the way, sometimes we don't know who it is, and so I've sometimes said import um, 6.20.2016, right? And the reason, I'll show you why, I, I just created a group. And it doesn't, you see I did it again, it doesn't like dashes, so I just, I knew you, you'd make that mistake if I didn't do it first, so that's what I did. Now it likes that. Now, the reason that I'm doing that is when I go up here to contacts and I go to import and export. So this is the part that you need to just get through somehow. You just need to do it. And what you generally are going to be doing is selecting the basic contact list. And in order to import somebody, you need a minimum of three pieces of information. You have to have a first name and a last name and then either a physical address or an email address. Phone numbers are okay. There's even a thing for notes that goes into comments. Where they work is okay. There's a whole bunch of things that you could import. Now, but you have to have that information. Now, I've got people in my database where I have their emails, but I didn't know their name. And rather than just deleting them, I made up a name. Just made up a name. And I gave everybody the same name. And in Excel, I, I could try to just created the name. Bernard <laughs> Flapdoodle is the name. And so, because right, I didn't think I'd be confused later about whether or not who this was. And then I just dragged it all the way down and I imported them because I was just going to, they, they weren't an A or a B anyhow, right? And I had no idea who they were because I didn't have their name, right? But I, I still want to spam, I mean, send them email uh, newsletters. Isn't that right? So once we've done that, um, now that we know that, you see where it says download a basic contact list template. If we click on that, I've got a whole bunch of these, but I'm, I'm going to download it anyhow. When we click on that, this template is going to pop up. And th this is the list. And if you are uh, have enough C in you like I do, I always like to click on that little tab at the box at the corner and I like to I like the columns to fit you know what I'm saying I just like that so if I've exported people out of a contact database so let's say uh, I'm not going to do this but let's say I'm going to go to one of my Gmail contact databases and it takes a little while for my Gmail to load um, You'll see why once it's loaded. Can I ask you? Yeah, please. If I was pulling people out of my room to juggler files, would, would I have to move the room to juggler files to the Excel sheet? You have to export it into Realty, Realty Juggler, export it into a comma-separated value file, which can be opened by Excel. So as an example, I have 7,099 people in this database right but let's just say I was going to do one of my I have more than one ever contact I don't know how that um, yeah I know 
uh, I have a transaction and somebody's complaining. And so I go into Gmail and I go to export. And what you want is Google separated value or Outlook. Either one of them is fine. Um, I have 9,534. I'm just going to pick this for demonstration purposes. And what it should be doing, so there we go, it's uh, exporting it. Now, this may not seem like the most effective way of doing it, but what I would normally do, now look at this is terrible. So um, I did that also on purpose so that if you pick the group and pick Outlook comma separated value file, and we do this again, even though we're not doing Outlook, does that work better? So I always tell people whether you're coming out of Yahoo, AOL, Hot, or wherever it is, pick Outlook separated value file. Okay. Right? Because now, can now it does. There is a middle name. We there's a place for us to do that later. But what I would generally do is go here. I would copy the first names. I would then notice if it's missing one. Like here's one that's missing. Right, that one's we got. We got either make up a name, figure out their name, or just not import them. So I then would copy that. I would go to my this template. I would paste it in. Do it for the last name. Do it for their email. Do it for their phone number. I know it seems like a pain, just but it takes five minutes. Copy, paste, paste, paste it in. Now that you're done, do not mess with those field headings. Do not change them. Don't make up new ones. Don't delete them. Leave them alone or it won't import. All right? Leave them alone or it just won't import. All right? What did you call that? And who did you go to see that the way you like those columns? Do you mean nice and neat? Nice. See this right in the top corner, this little box way up? Oh, you can't see it because... Uh, see that little box up there? Oh, that, little box. that selects everything. And then I go to format, auto fit column width so that they all fit and I feel better. And I feel better when they all fit. All right. Now, one other, one other thing I'm going to do with this, because we're not going to really save this. I'm not going to use this. If I go to file and I go to save, it's going to say some features in your workbook will be lost if you keep using this format. Do you want to keep using the format? Say yes. And then it's going to, uh, and by the way, I usually would do file save as, and let me just find a place. Yeah, um, I would do file save as because I might say, because I might be doing this more than once, and I might say June 22016, so I know which one, comma separated value file, cool, I don't care. Now it's going to give me that same thing, do I want to keep using it? The answer is yes. It will not import an Excel spreadsheet, but it will import a comma separated value file. When you go to close it, it's going to say, do you want to save your changes? Click don't save. This is counterintuitive. If you click save, what, what Excel really wants you to save this as an Excel file. They really want you to do it. And so they're going to keep trying to trick you into saving it as an Excel file. If you click on save, you're now saving it as an Excel file, which will not import. Say, don't save, even though it's like, oh, my God, I didn't save it. It's still there. Okay. Right? It's still there. Trust me. It's still there. All right. All right. So now that you've done that, you want to, are these cold, hot, warm? So if there are people you know and you say, I don't really know, who cares? Buyer, seller, now look, these groups, it's not as easy to send. The problem with this contact type, it's easy to send an email to a contact type, but it's not easy to launch a campaign on a contact type, right? And so the, the value of a campaign, and one of the things I believe when I coach people is you ought to be working and developing referral business. How many of you get stuff from lenders? Or how many of you send lender stuff? How many of you spam them back, right? You know, say so you're going to send me your rate sheet every week. Fine. 
you're getting mine too, right? You know, isn't that right? So should we be doing that? Should that be part allied resources? Should that be part of our system? Would that be a different content maybe than we would send to buyers and sellers and our, our family and friends and coworkers? You could do something different, but you understand it's good for us to know what they are, but um, we, we, we may need a group for them later because we can't send a campaign to a type. You can't change that. No, you can't. You, you can't change it there. The groups. The group, that's why I started with groups that's before true. I started with import. Add contacts to a group. Look at look at all my look at all these groups. Yeah. Pick one. So you understand if you don't do this first, you have to group them later. Gotcha. Right, and even if all you could do is say it's that I created one that said I think I created one I don't know that simply said it was an import for this day, six twenty. So at least I know I, I I could pull them all up. You can you can search contacts by group. So if I if I say I don't really know what to call these people, but Jerison, do we know if they're a buyer or a seller? We don't really know. Right, so we put buyer seller. We say at least they're uh, this import, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each person, and I'm going to decide: is this an A plus? Is this an A, a B, a C? Or who is this person? I have no idea. What what could you do if you found somebody that you didn't know? Let's say they have a phone number. Call them up. Call them up. What would you say? Hi. You know what? I found your phone number, and I I just can't. Bring it up. How do I know you? It's right. No, no. Would that be? Would that be fine? What do you do? So what do you do? What do you do? Right? You know. <coughs> By the way, one of the reasons I talk about the mobile app, um, I have a, a, a an escrow that's hemorrhaging a little bit, but it's not dead. Not dead. It's not dead. So I'm at a, an open house. A couple comes through. Husband's not saying a word. Wife is a little chatty, but not very cooperative. Uh, I've gone through my normal script. They're not having it, you know. They're uh, 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 uh. we want a pool. Mine didn't have a pool. I'm talking to them, so I've had a chance to talk to lender. Yeah, we're doing it this week, and so finally I said, "So, what business are you in? What line of work?" And she says, "He's a plumber," and I said, "Really, a plumber? That's great. I'm putting together a preferred vendor list for my clients, and I need a good. Is he any good?" Right, yeah. and and then she says, "Oh my, oh yeah, he's the best." And snap, out comes a business card. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. For the preferred vendor list. Right. right, it's got her last name spelled out, her phone number, her cell phone number, her work number, her email address. I followed up. We're in contract on another house. Yeah. So would that be? Is that a way to get? Kind, right. And by the way, do you need a plumber in your Absolutely. in your preferred yes. vendor Absolutely. list? Right. Could they send you leads? Yep. Could you send them leads? Yep. So one of my scripts for this is to have a conversation with the vendor that says, hi, you know, I'm putting together a preferred vendor list and I need a, a good plumber for my list. I was looking at your Yelp reviews. You seem to be killing it. You know, uh, maybe we could work together. By the way, do you have a real estate agent or two that you refer people to if they have questions about real estate? If they say, yes, as a matter of fact, my sister's a real estate agent, I'm a member of BNI, and I have this real estate agent there, and I go, so what do we do then? Yeah. Call another plumber. Is that right? Uh, if we do this enough, are we going to run across one who says, well, no, actually, I don't have a real estate agent. No, you know, I really, I don't know. No, I don't. Well, great. Why don't we meet? Why don't I have coffee? How many, you should be trying to have one or two coffee dates. My my system, right, which um, is that you ought to be developing referral business, not necessarily by referral only. And I'm not. I'm talking about should you? You should be talking to anybody who's in the business that they could find people that would refer you business. Contractors, house cleaners, CPAs, tax people, lawyers, insurance agents. Should they be in your database? Right. I'll give you a, a free one. This is, I know I'm supposed to be talking about technology. I'm in a coffee shop. A guy walks in. He's wearing a farmer's insurance polo shirt. I asked him, I said, oh, you're in the journey. And so what I suggested to him, I said, well, do you have people that are in your database? Do you do homeowner's insurance? He says, yeah. 
I say, great, do you have people in your database that maybe bought a home five years ago or more? Um, by the way, do those people, when values go up, do they up their insurance? Do they generally increase their coverage because their home is worth more? He said, N hardly ever. And I said, should they? And he said, well, of course they should. Well, maybe we could reach out to them. I could offer them a free market analysis. I could offer them a free market analysis, and maybe they'll want to increase their insurance. So maybe we could send something. I'm not going to charge you, by the way, for you to make a postcard to send to your database. They're going to pay for the postcard. He's going to pay for the mailing. I'm not going to charge for the free market analysis. How many of you would like somebody to send out 500 postcards with your name and contact information on it asking for a free market analysis? Right? How about if you did, could you find 10 of those? Could you get 10, 5,000 sent out? Found 10 of those? Could you get 5,000 sent out without you having to pay for it? Is that possible? Should we follow up on people like that? Right, so we want a group for them. We're going to pick on choose file. We're going to check this box that says, I promise that they really want to be in my database. They begged me, begged me to be in the database and have me send all my stuff. And then when we've done that, we click on import and it'll import the database. It doesn't do it instantaneously. It takes a little bit of time. And what it'll do is it'll give you what's failed. It'll show you which ones didn't go through and why. Sometimes it'll say it's a duplicate. Um, sometimes it'll say it's not, uh, there's something wrong. And once we've done that, we now have our database. Everybody that's in your cell phone, everybody that's in your email client, everybody you meet, everybody you know, every business card. Are there programs and devices that would help you convert a business card into a contact database? Yep. Right? They're, they're available on phones. Yep. They take a picture of it. I actually have a card scanner, USB powered, because I find that they're a little more accurate. Should you be collecting business cards of everyone you meet? Absolutely. Absolutely. Put them in the database. Send them a newsletter. All right? So export contacts. The reason that this might come up is you've decided you don't want to use eEdge anymore because you want to, I don't know, move on to something else. The other is the system will, e will, will do postcards, but it doesn't make labels. Let me say that again. It will send out mailers to people for about 84 cents each, but it won't make labels. So if you want to make labels, what you do is you go to export, you pick a group, you then um, pick all statuses and you click on export and what it will do is it will export all of that in a comma separated value file which you could then merge with 5160 Avery labels right or any you and there are if you don't know how to do a mail merge you should click on this little box up here and say how do I do a mail um, in Excel for labels and Outlook and Word, you know, and then you could do it. So, by the way, uh, and notice Google has gotten so many of these, they've already created their own little thing there. So, um, if you're not good at technology, you have to do all this. One of the things that I do when I'm coaching people, and some people I coach, the, the person who's closed the most transactions that I'm working with had 54 transactions. Uh, last year, and uh, the second highest producer I'm, I'm working with, it had over 30 million in sales, uh, 38 million, but she's in a high-end area, so didn't do that many transactions, relatively speaking. Everybody seems to have the same problem, right? Do you understand? The, per the guy with 54 transactions is not a happy guy, right? Because everything is hemorrhaging and falling apart, and he's, it's crazy, and he wants to quit, <laughs> as does the person who did 38 million. And part of the problem is, is they're doing too much stuff. And if you're not, so one of the techniques, remember the one, three, five? Ben Kinney has added to that another five and a who. To give you an idea what that would mean, sphere of influence would be maybe one strategy 
for buyers and sellers. The second five would be that list I just went through. And the next question I would suggest, once you've made a list of all the things that need to be done with a particular strategy, the question is who? And what you would be writing in is either me or not me. And you, now to understand the dropping by, that probably has to be you. You could look for a body double, a lookalike, you know, uh, you know, and you know, but probably you. Phone calls probably have to be you. Do you have to do this? No. Do you have to? If you're not good at this and you're trying to mail merge, you're trying to mail merge labels, and it's taking you more than 15 minutes. You need <laughs> to find somebody else. Right, you understand? Find somebody else. You're never going to make three hundred thousand dollars a year doing fifteen dollar an hour work. Right, it's not going to happen. Right, so I have a full time assistant who's in the Philippines, works eight hours a day for me, starting at normal time. She's really good at this stuff, and I'm good at this stuff. Do you understand? I'm actually good at this stuff, but it's not my big rocks. It's not my 20%. Does everybody understand? 20% of what we do produces 80% of our income. And 80% of what we do produces 20% of our income. And what you need to do is know which of those things are your 20%. Lou, did you have a... Oh, I was just going to say, you know, the edge is very specific, of course, to Keller Williams. Um, so I just started thinking about, well, how would I find somebody to help with this that knows the edge? Probably talk to other realtors around here. How would you find somebody that knows how to use it? E Edge? E Edge is powered by a company called Market Leader. Market Leader is the second largest real estate agent customer relationship management system in the United States. Top producer is number one, Market Leader is number two. And by the way, E Edge is number three, and that's because Keller Williams uses it. But actually, this system, if you added Keller Williams E-Edge to Market Leader, I've hired people from Coldwell Banker that were using Market Leader. Right? So could you find somebody that understands? By the way, this is not that difficult. The company that I work with is a company called My Outdesk, which was started by Keller Williams agents, and they're the ones that have virtual assistants, and you'll find people that already know how to do E-Edge they already know about Keller Williams campaigns. They've already been trained in this, right? I pay $9.80 an hour for somebody that, by the way, speaks English better than most people at the office that my license is at. <laughs> Not kidding. Not kidding. Sorry. Oh, they're there. Anyhow. Um, so, so. <laughs> Oops. Anyhow. So, uh, but, but could you find somebody, you could find somebody that could do this, like any high school dropout. There's a joke there someplace. All right, so uh, what, let's go to contacts and click on all contacts and move forward on this. Let's talk about how to add a, con let's add a contact, right? So it shows us who's recently active, add a contact. We, we've already talked about groups, let's add a contact. So I'm just going, now notice the default setting is lead. If we leave them as a lead, it's going to come back. Every time it's going to say, hey, you need to talk to this person. I'm going to say warm because I'm tired of this. And I'm going to just make up somebody, John, D-O-U-G-H, how about that? And um, if there's a nickname, J -O Johnny, uh, gender, Company, if they work with something, title, if we want that, birthday. Now, notice how a uh, calendar popped up. What happens in the reminder, if I put in the birthday a week before their birthday, it's going to start reminding me it's their birthday. How would we find somebody's birthday? It begins with face and ends with book. You can look it up on Facebook. What? MySpace? You're too young just to know what MySpace is. Yeah, get off of my. What's another one? LinkedIn doesn't have birthdays as much. No. Ask them. How about that? Let's, let's, let's think out of the envelope. Let's think out of the envelope. By the way, I, so what I, I, I found it uh, as a 
general thing, if they're not on Facebook or LinkedIn, generally I talk to people, I say, if you don't mind, I'd like to collect uh, just some basic information, and I ask them what their birthday, not date necessarily, but birthday is. So if we pick a, a date, it's going to remind us a week before that their birthday is coming. So depending upon if they're an A+, plus, an A, a B, a C, or D, how should we react to that? If they're an A++, plus, plus, we should be buying something. Yes, we should go first. Right, we should buy something and go see them. If it's an A, we might want to go buy a nice, real birthday card and something, right? Maybe not, maybe a Starbucks or something. A B, at some point we're on Facebook, and on Facebook we could just say, she's stealing a computer, stop her. Um, we might just say happy birthday on their birthday. Some people actually upload videos and things like that, right? Did you know, did you know that people could do that? Jib, Jeff, did you see mine? No. So anyhow, there's, there's, um, there's a bunch, I have a bunch of stuff going on. So what we can do is, if on Facebook, there's some lender. So this is one of my Facebook things. So people, so somebody uploaded this video. <laughs> I know, I know, I don't have to see the whole thing. Here we go. Don't have to see the whole thing. <laughs> Get up. Is that more fun? Now, some people said that got a lot of reactions. A lot of people, some people did that. Uh, it was like, on my, I had a birthday recently. Some people had animated GIFs. That was a picture I took. Of, so would that be better than simply on our phone typing in every birthday and hit send? Would that be better? Okay. Right. But as we go down, maybe the C's were like, you know, happy birthday. And that's, and that's all. Right. But, um, so, uh, purchase anniversary, past client, do you know when you sold them the house and when it closed? One of the things I recommend to the people I coach is what I call the 71430, and that's just the, the kickoff, and that means, I mean, excuse me, the one, I always say that wrong, the 11430, and what that means is, is that the day after it closes, I call them up and say, hey, I know it's a busy day, it's a crazy day you know, just closed and all that. Um, I just want to make sure that there wasn't anything broken. Everything is going cool. By the way, if their friends are moving them, I'll have pizzas or other things sent over so they don't have to worry about the food. If it's dirty, I'll have my cleaner go and clean. If something is broken, I'll have my handyman go and fix it. I don't charge them, and I say, I'll call you back in a couple of weeks. I know it's still going to be crazy just to see what's going on. Two weeks later, I'm calling them back. I do it again in 30 days. Um, by the way, at this point, have, I, have we made an impression that it isn't just the money, it's not all over, we're moving forward. Should you know every, when the anniversary, should they be on, a, should they be getting birthday cards from you, should they be getting your newsletter, should you know when your purchase anniversary was? This will remind you a week before. Referral information, uh, John referred, Bill referred John to me, right? Bill um, um, referred them to me so that when I'm having a conversation with this guy, I can say, you know, well, yeah, Bill, you remember Bill. And so up here, are they just looking one to three months? Should we be able to sort people by this? I know I'm going a little bit. That's pretty categories and subtypes you don't really need to do anything with. That's if you want to characterize them as a first-time home buyer. Email address. This allows us to make comments. Now, it's the commenting 
that uh, makes this part of a customer relationship management program. So when I click on save, I really don't want to save this, but I'm going to anyhow. I got enough stupid things. I know it wants something, wants an email address. Before I let me save it. Um, by making a comment, we can keep a running conversation log. Secondary details would be married. Um, there's a welcome email. If you click on this box, it pops up. Um, the groups, we could add them to a group right then and there. We could click on save. And let me see, will it allow me to create a, a, uh, a reminder? Not until I save them. I have to save them to create a reminder. So you could use the same format for hot buyer? Hot buyer, hot seller. Yeah. Uh, hot buyer at buyer.com. Okay. okay so. so I've created an email address simply so it'll let me save it. But it's a valid email address for the e-signature e link. What is how I put in a, I don't know, I screwed up. All right, so it should be, that's what happened, the, my mistake appeared for e-signatures. You guys use dot loop? Up here, dot loop? No. We don't either down there. What do you use instead? What? For um, dot loop transaction management? Skyslope. Skyslope. We use Skyslope too. So anyhow, I'm, I'm pretty good at Skyslope because it's um, three offices that I work at use Skyslope. So now that I've saved it, one of my choices are reminders. Each time I talk to somebody, should I add comments about what we talked about? Yes. Should I have in my mind what's next? So I'm going to add a reminder. Um, now it's already for this contact. I click on this. I pick a date, time, whatever. I have to type something in. Um, I can decide whether or not it's a task, a phone call, or a meeting. I don't generally use this as my calendar program, but eh, it doesn't matter. But a phone call or a meeting or a task, and I click on save. And I've now created a contact. I've categorized them. I could have added them to a group. And I also could send them a listing. So if your IDX is hooked up, and I don't have any listings up in this area, but this is, so I've, I've hooked up my IDX. And what I can do is I could do a property search using eEdge. And I have to, it's a little wonky in that down here, I have to click on the ones I want to include in my initial email. So I say, I'm going to send him that one. That one looks like a nice little house, 1.15 million. Here's another nice one. I'm going to include that one. I'm going to let him see this one. And then I can save this as an alert, and it'll actually do email alerts. Now, I don't know what your email alerts look like, uh, Robin is mad at me, I know. That's the <laughs> agent on the other. Madhu wants to talk to me about a PRGS contract. So let me just see uh, W-E-D-N-E-S-D-A, Wednesday's listing. So Liz Aguero, that's a good-looking picture. So this is what the E-Edge listing alerts look like. I don't know about your MLS, but our MLS listing alerts don't look so nice. Basically, it's a text email with a link for somebody to click on. Is that what they look like up here? So does that look better? Yes, that's what mine looks like. Right. Well, does your email alerts from the MLS look like that? No. So the yeah, MLS allows you to... They say view details and stuff like that. Your property report. Right. Does it have pictures of the homes yes. in the search in yes. your email from the MLS? Right. So maybe you don't want to use this. The one, the M other MLS that I'm part of, the, they look terrible. And this looks better. One of the values of using the eEdge system is, is that people can set up their own email alerts and make changes without you having to do it. At one point, I had 180 email alerts from different buyers going. You can't manage something like that. Right? You understand? They have to be able to create their own. So 
Um, that's not where I'm at. So whether you want to do that or not, I don't. Maybe you don't. Some 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 are better than others. Let's go to the other thing I want to do before we go. See where up here it says hi, and there's my picture or your picture. And next month I'll be back and we'll do an advanced, you know, how to, how to go beyond this. But I want you to click on this. And what you want to do is go down to my account. And one of the things you want to look at is, first of all, are all these details okay? And by that I mean your external email. I use my kw.com email. You have a title, your BRE number. I only recommend one phone number. Right? I just don't think it's good. I don't know. It's just my thing. And notice here where it says mobile app. If yours does not have something like that on the end, it means you have a generic mobile app. And if you're in the whole mobile app thing is something different, but I'm going to go over here where it says back to eEdge, and I'm going to open this in a new tab. And if you go here to technology and you go to mobile app resources and you scroll down, you're going to find view your mobile download web address. And when you click on that, it'll eventually, eventually, oh, it's still spinning around. It'll show you your mobile app web address. And what you're going to want to do, that's this here. And what you're going to want to do is copy that. And here, you're going to want to, that looks like a different one. I have too many, I have more than one account. I wonder what that is. Silicon City, whatever. I don't know. Anyhow, I have, I think I have more than one mobile address. Anyhow, so I, I would click save. If your website, if you have a non-EDGE website or another website, you can put it in here. Now, the reason you want to do that is that by default on a lot of the marketing pieces, it will say download my mobile app. And if you want it to download your mobile app, you have to put the link to your mobile app in that segment. We do email signature. Right. Yeah. But you need to, but if there is, you have to put it in the there too. One thing, Mike, too, if we want to, um, in the, a lot of, I've had a lot of agent questions about um, in the account preferences. If you don't, they ask what the KW Realty email is, and we have to. I don't know if it's worth mentioning. The rest of the people here that you can't put your Gmail or KW.com or something because eEdge won't capture the leads unless it's that KW Realty. Yeah, that's um, and then people will also ask, is that another email they have to check? Yes and no. The, the common question I get is, why do I have another email? I don't want another email. I've already got too many emails. Why do I want that email? This email system, eEdge, will send out 2,000 emails at one time and 5,000 in one month. Google will not let you do that. Try sending out 2,000 emails yeah, through your Gmail account. Was 500. Right? I thought the limit was 500. No, for this it's 2,000 at one time. I, I've tested this. Okay. Right. This will allow you to send out 5,000 a month, 2,001 shot. Now, in order to send an email, you have to have an email. Right? The technical term is an SMTP. You have to have an email server to send out that many email, and Google will not let you use their email server to do this. So eEdge will do that. That's why you have the email. Now, I believe you ought to use your kw.com Gmail email. I think it looks professional. It looks it's a business email. Now, this may require John's help. We'll see. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So I'm going to go over here to email settings, and at the very bottom is something called email client setup. And when you click on that and it says email my password and settings, what it will do is email to the email that you have designated. Remember under 
we went to accounts and there's like my email I put in mdevlin at kw.com it's going to email me a, this stuff and a special password you do not know what this is this is not a password you created it's not one you made it's not one you know of it will email so what happens when I click on email this it's going to email to my kw.com Google email this email which includes my secret special password and then in Google there's something called mail fetcher and what mail fetcher is Google my Google account one of them reads Yahoo and I have a whole bunch of them. I mean it's it's ridiculous if you saw it's ridiculous and they're all read by one Gmail account. So what that means is, is that once you've done this and you set up mail fetcher and you put in that username and the secret password, which I can't show you because I have to, you know, can't, um, then it means that your Gmail account will receive the KW Realty email. Which means that if somebody responds to one of your marketing pieces and says, yeah, I want to sell my house, call me. It comes right into your Gmail without you having to log into kw.com. If you're using Outlook or something else and you click on print and you print it out and then you go into wherever it is you're using and you put in that to fetch the email, and it'll fetch the email. So you don't have to log into KW Realty in order to read the email. If They all come into my Gmail and I can answer them on my cell phone. The, with that, was that close to what you? Yes, yeah. and also that if they change that, because I've had agents change the KW Realty, which means he is not capturing the leads. Right, you don't want to change this. This is not an email you want to give to anybody. Yeah. The only reason we have it is that we have to have an email to send email. Right? You understand what I'm saying? There has to be an email address that is connected with your yeah, account. I don't like it on, so, on the Roster. Well, you should put it. So change that. Well, just did. tell them complain. Hold your breath and stand. And then I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think if the campaigns will have your the external email as the reply to also to avoid emails filling into that. Right. So I have people that have that email and they use it. I the next time I do this, I, we would go through. Because we've done enough. If you have, I don't know if it was this too basic for everyone or not, uh, not not advanced enough. So the next time I come up and uh, I I'll go through the my marketing section. But my marketing, if I'll I'll just show you, it says mdevlin at kw.com. That's what it says. That's what it says. And there are people that I sometimes I slip. And I just send somebody an email through KW Realty and they hit reply, but it comes into my Gmail anyhow and I can reply. I'm having a difficulty when I want to just find just my buyers or I just want to sign just my souls or, you know, my soul clients or I'm... All right, so we're here on quick searches. That's that's so right now we're we're looking at a search. See where it says more search options? More search options? Where? All right. So if you I clicked on all contacts. Yes, that's what I can And see where it says more search options? Where's your oh more search options? Underneath search. Got it. Notice it says contact types. Mine says fewer. Well then you already have something that looks like this. Okay. Do you see contact types? Filter okay. by group. Okay, those are by group. Filter by group or contact types. Contact types. There's buyer, buyer, seller is a contact type. If you've created a group. So I need to go to this if I want to segment. Yeah. There isn't. This is what segment stuff. If I go into my groups and I put the A plus and all the things that we did. Does that show up in here? It'll be another group. Notice I've created an A-plus group. There it is. Okay, so it does show up there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you can either do it by contact type or by group. Easy to do. Okay. You can also search for people that are on listing alerts. You could search for people that are on active campaigns. You could. There's just a whole bunch of stuff to do. What is exactly the listing alert 
the listing alert is like the MLS sends somebody says I want a four bedroom, a two so bath, the, function, the same MLS thing. Right, okay. right. Okay. And in some areas, generally, so, so if your MLS is cool, the the one thing that this will do that the MLS generally will not do is let clients do it themselves. Okay. So so, so for I don't have the function of doing it in here versus we can't do it in. Yeah, I don't. The MLS, I don't believe. I mean, yours is a different. I have sort of access, but not. Right. So anyhow, I've had people that you know that that were geeky and they, they wanted to create their own alerts, and I don't know how easy that is to do it through your MLS that's connected to you. Generally, they're not easy to do. In this one, they can create they can create again and again and again. Well, then then you don't need this. This system is designed for everybody in the United States and Canada. Okay. And so there's different, I, I work with multiple MLSs, right? And each one, some of them are Apatone, and some of them are Paragon, and some of them is Matrix. It's a, you know, and, and the functionality from one county to the other changes. All right? So don't use the MLS part here. Don't use the idea. Okay, so I could use this instead of. You could. Buyers and sellers can, through their eEdge account, can create the listing alerts right, themselves. Right. It makes it very easy. It's a lot simpler than I think that in doing it through the MLS. All right. Well, that's great. Then, then, so that's what I've done. Like my email signature, and I have a, uh, my one of my people have signed it. She sent me a picture of the people that I'm coaching. Of they signed off. I'm just saying, you guys ought to, you know, just saying. So, um, just saying, here's other people. Let me close this and close that. So, your email signature, let me just, can I do a minute on email signatures? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, do, do you want to do it for me? Sure. The, the, what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, I, I have this thing about email signatures. All right. CC has heard me when I didn't have my medication. So... Um, my thing about email signatures is, yeah, I've seen the one that Michael Lewis Marketing makes. It looks nice. My problem with it is, is that most people read email on their cell phones. And personally, I get really annoyed because I have agents who send me an email saying, will you please call me? And their email signature is this big picture, which you understand on the cell phone is not a very big picture. And their phone number is nowhere in their email. It's nowhere in their email, so I can't just tap their number and call them. So I have to write out on a piece of paper their phone number so I can call them back on my cell phone. So your issue is with static email signatures? I don't think an email signature, if you want an image, I, why not? But I think that it's ignoring the fact that most people are reading emails on their cell phone. Don't, how, where do you read emails first? Most of them are on my email, on my phone. On your phone. Yes. So, I notice mine, it's easy to call me. I, I, this is my, now I have agents, they like the big signature because it looks really good on a big screen computer, but they've also, because they've heard me ranting at them, put in their phone number, website, and other links yeah. in addition to that so people could actually call them. See, I, I get, I get, I get, you heard me, right? Well, I, even after that one episode, <laughs> <laughs> John helped me change yeah. mine. Right, and, and so, because people send me an email and say, call me, and I have to pull over my car, get out a piece of paper and a stubby pencil, write out their phone number so I can tap it into my phone because they didn't include their phone number in my email signature. That's the, that's it, that's the one. That's the one I don't use, right? So the other, so what I've got is, so it would, would it make sense that they could just tap it and call you? Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be, wouldn't, doesn't that make sense? Right, and I don't care if you want the big thing. The thing about these two is they'll wrap if it's a small phone, right? In other words, my, my picture will go above it. And so these are the links that I have included in my, that one, by the way, says add me to your address book. But I have find your dream home, get an instant valuation of your home. I use Cloud CMA for that. 
I also have listing to leads, but that could be find out what your home is worth if you're just yeah. using a template. Download the best mobile app in real estate. That takes people to my download page, yeah. which should look like this. That looks like a different one than I put in. Maybe not. Right? There it is. Uh, I don't have to make this go back. So, and then it's got, uh, I have a real estate school. Did you know I have a real estate school? And then I have follow me on and I put those links in. Right? I like, I think that's uh, a useful email signature. I mean, it looks as pretty as the great big things, but it looks really good on a cell phone. I just took whatever somebody else could put on their phone. Yeah. But, but <laughs> I would yeah, make like that right it looks good on a big computer but it doesn't look any oh, good on it doesn't look good on the cell phone which is where most people are reading their emails in the first place and for gosh sakes put in your phone number even if you don't want to do all these other links I don't know why you wouldn't want people to be able to set up a search and do it but put in your phone number so that people can just tap it and call you that's my that was my um is there a way to attach our mobile app? Attach? Or, or I should say um, include our mobile app. Yeah. There is. Right here. You need to do it. I will do it. Right. Do you mean download the best mobile app in real estate? Can you do that too? Yeah, we can. Yeah, yeah, this is okay. New glasses. They're just links instead of pictures, is all. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is uh, a. Can you change the signature to look like that? Yeah. yeah. See where it says find your dream home, get an instant valuation, download the best mobile app, you click that. It goes right to my mobile app site. Yeah. So I put that in my email signature because I know people are reading my email uh, on their cell phone and they might just click on it and download the best mobile app in real estate. Right? Okay. Isn't that... Uh, you, no, worth you can't just direct them to go to the app store and get it because it's generic. So if you use the, your own link, then your name's on it and then you can also... Right, and you can put it on your website, you. like the new right. KW website. <laughs> You create a menu item, and one of the choices is add a link, and you could say mobile app, add that link as a menu item for your new KW website, and it would show up mobile app. And when people click on that menu item, they'll go to your mobile app download page. I'll be busy in the next two weeks. Call me. Yeah. 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 John's going to say, don't come back for a while. Just don't, don't come back ever. No, no, you're fine. It's all good. Yeah. Job security. It is. Yeah, well. There, the, you know, the thing is, there's a whole lot more that you could get out. You ought to get the most out of the, what you're already paying for. Agents will come to me and they'll say, I'm thinking about buying top producer, active agent, or one of these others. And I'm like, well, you use this. No. Well, 90% of the agents don't do anything with their database. Is that not a fair statement? Either? That's fair. At least. Right, 90% don't do anything. And before you go spend the money every month signing up for a whole bunch of other, you know, software, Isaac or any of the others, why don't we learn how to use the contact management system you've already bought? And then decide, yeah. if, it and then decide if, it, if it doesn't meet your needs. Okay. Yeah, go Sorry ahead. Sorry to ask, but no, please. the stuff on the Playster Facebook group was saying that eEdge is fading away. Is that true? Yes, but not soon. Okay. So... Well, there, I, I'm assuming there'll be a migration plan or something for the contacts. I hope. I guess you export them in and import them in. Right. When uh, we were talking about doing this, I called Keller Williams because my question for them was, I'm been, I, and by the way, other the Palo Alto Market Center has asked me to do this class too. And so um, I called Keller Williams and I said, is it worthwhile for me to teach people how to use it? And they said, oh, we're it's going to be a long time, like not this year. Yeah, that's Let's start with that, not this year. And part of it, I also have talked to the Playster people, and they only do email. They're not set up to make flyers and all this other kind of stuff. And so that this is a very formative stage. And, um, and so there would be a migration. It's not going to change in a long time. All of the information can easily be exported if you wanted to go to another system. Uh, we could, it's an easy thing to do. But right now, I would practice on this. And, uh, you know. Yeah, I just, I get that question too, so I just. Yeah, to... yeah, no, that's uh, not anytime soon. All right, was that enough to last you for one, 
one day. I'm going to be doing sort of a repeat of this. Was that was this a useful thing? Do you want oh, more more I, of this? I thing? learned more from you today than I I understand yeah. it a heck of a lot more than I've ever understood. I, I gave her 20 bucks before I, I said, when the time comes, there'll be another, there'll be another 10 later if you, if you. And then tomorrow you're doing this again in Saluma, right? Right. Okay. And then you're welcome to, to you know. And then in a month, I'll, I might come back and do more lessons. It all depends on what you tell, you know, afterwards. Yeah. You know, tell Tony this is great. Yeah. All right. See you guys online later. <laughs>